Hello, bug friends, and welcome back to our series, What's in a Name, where we take the Greek roots of the insect order name, break it down, and that lets you know how these insects are all related and what keeps them together and why they're in this order together. Today, we are talking about the insect order Neuroptera. Now, if you've been with me and following this series for a while, you know that Terra means wing and neuro means nerves. This is why you have neurons in your nervous system. And this has to do with the crazy amount of wing venation that we see in the insects that belong to this order. Now, when I was studying taxonomy like eight years ago, Neuroptera included a whole lot more insects. And it really included anything that was beyond dragonflies that looked like it had a lot of wing venation. So it currently includes like owl flies, ant lions, lace wings, and mantis flies, but used to include also, back in the day, used to, dobson flies and snake flies. Dobson flies and snake flies have been removed and they are now their own separate orders, which we will cover, but Neuroptera keeps all of the rest. The order name has to do with the amount of wing venation that we see in these insects. And that was originally the characteristic that was that kept all of these insects in their same order until we decided that snake flies and Dobson flies were special enough to be kicked out. But Traditionally, Neuroptera was the insects with a lot of wing venation. Neuroptera are relatively recent additions to the insect clade. They are holometabolist insects. That means that they have complete metamorphosis. They have an egg, a larva, a pupil, and a adult stage. And normally by the time we get up here to the holometabolist insects, we see a reduction in wing venation. The ancestral trait is lots of veins. Think of dragonflies and think of mayflies. So once you get this kind of far of, up the evolutionary tree and this recent, normally a lot of that wing venation is lost. It's just costly to make. You don't really need that much to support the wing. If you don't use it, you lose it, right? So all of these insects that were holometabolists that had all of this wing venation, people were like, they all belong together. And for the most part, they do. This order is now left with the lace wings, the green and the brown and the beaded lace wings, which are my favorite because their larvae eat termites and do this by farting on them, which is hilarious because I'm still five. And also the owl flies and the ant lions. Many people confuse like owl flies or ant lions with dragon flies. They have a very similar body shape, a long slender body and big, four big broad wings. However, when they're in flight is when really where it's easy to tell the difference. Because if you're watching what you think is a dragonfly and you're like, hmm, that kind of looks like a dragonfly flying, but it looks a little slow and clumsy and drunk, then it's probably an owl fly or an ant lion. The easiest way to distinguish them from the dragonflies are the antennae. Dragonflies have really short, tiny, barely even noticeable antennae that are just like little hairs. Whereas both the ant lions and the owl flies have different antennae from each other, but have long antennae compared to the dragonflies. But yeah, so if you're like, hmm, that looks like a drunk dragonfly, probably Neuroptera. So if you look at an insect that has a lot of wing venation and you know it's not a mayfly and you know it's not a dragonfly and you know it's not a dobson fly or a snake fly, pretty sure bet it's in Neuroptera, the nerve-winged insects. 